Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be naughty. I'm gonna be a naughty vampire god. <laughs>
Now we've got another new card in the deck, but we'll get to that at the end. Uh, that one is from Wilds of Eldraine, but starting at the beginning of the curve, we've got four Cutthroat Contender, four Eye Core Drinker, four Falconrath Pit Fighter, and four Valdaran Epicure. All of these are crucial. We need all of the one-drop vampires so that we can speed out a Markov Baron as quickly as humanly possible and then buff all of those one-drop vampires. Consistently, we can get 10-plus power on the board turn 2, which is kind of insane. If we played Falconroth Pit Fighter and then turn 2, we played two more Falconroth Pit Fighters and then, well, I guess it would have to be one Falconroth Pit Fighter and one Contender or two contenders, whatever the case may be, we could tap all three of those for a Baron, and then that ends up being two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If we count the ability for the Cutthroat Contender to be buffed by plus one power by paying a life, that gives us 11 potential power on the board on turn two. Now, granted, we're not swinging on turn two if we do that, but sometimes we can split the difference uh, maybe we're not tapping all of our one-drop creatures or all of our creatures in general to play the Baron. Maybe we're careful about, oh, we can play a one-drop and a two-drop here, and then we can tap the creatures that came into play with Summoning Sickness and also tap one more mana to play the Baron, and some of our creatures are still up that can swing. So not only can we just play the Baron for free on turn two by tapping three one-drops, but we can sort of split the difference sometimes, play it for super cheap, play out a bunch of creatures and tap them immediately to play it, um, and just get a bunch of board presence online super quick. It, it gets really insane. But the abilities also help. Icor Drinker is really good for gaining back some of the life we're going to be spending for things like Cutthroat Contender when we're buffing it. Uh, but also, we want to play the Icor Drinker first usually, because if they've got removal, it eats the removal really well and can come back incubating a 2-2 a creature for us, which is nice. Uh, Pit Fighter, if we're on uh, on the play, a lot of times we want to start with the Pit Fighter if we have the opportunity to get in for a little extra damage. Um, Epicure gives us a Blood Token, which is going to matter for when we get to our 2 drops. It's also going to matter for digging for cards that we need, but it also does a damage when it comes into play, and that also matters when we talk about our 2 drops. Let's, let's move on to our 2 drops now. We've got 4 Blood Tithe Harvester. Now, this allows us to have removal in the deck while still having an entire deck consisting of vampires. There's literally only one card in the whole deck that's a non-land that's not a vampire, and we'll talk about that at the end. That's also the new card that's coming from Wilds of Eldraine. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester lets us deal with threats. Vampire Socialite comes into play as a 2-2 menace for 2. Puts a counter on every creature we have as long as we've dealt any damage that turn, which is really easy to do for this deck. A lot of times we can play a 1-drop on turn 1, turn 2, swing with it, play the Socialite, get a counter on our 1-drop, and be primed to swing again next turn and put counters on everything that enters the battlefield on, on turn 3. So, can be a very, very good turn 2 play. Or Harvester can be a good turn to play if we need to make sure we have the ability to have creature removal online. Or if we just want to use the Blood Token. We've also got four copies of Dusk Legion Duelist. This thing is a beast in this deck. 2-2 two, two Vigilance means it can swing, and then after combat, we can tap it to pay for the Convoke for a Markov Baron. So there's a little bit of extra synergy there, but there's also ways that this deck puts counters on creatures and we're able to get that draw off Dusk Legion Duelist. And we don't consistently, we don't, we, we don't have a lot of ways to like make sure we're always putting a counter on the Duelist every single turn, but we have enough ways in the deck to put counters on our creatures that consistently we can expect to at least once or twice in a game put a counter on this and get one or two extra cards and honestly in an aggro deck that kills as fast as this one does that one or two extra cards makes all the difference in the world and this card is absolutely worth including at four copies so we've got 12 two drops 16 one drops all of that helps us convoke out the baron super quick We've also got three Valdaran Thrill Seekers. This is a way for us to put extra power onto the field that can immediately swing in by putting that back up to those two plus one plus one counters on one of our other creatures that doesn't have summoning sickness that's going to swing that turn, but then also gives us the ability to close out the game by just sacking that creature and doing a bunch of damage to our opponent's head. Uh, we can also 
sacrifice creatures to uh, act as removal to get rid of problematic threats like shield rids on the other side. So having four blood tithe harvesters and three Valdar and three thrill seekers that we can use as removal to get rid of our opponent's threats while still being vampires and being able to keep the deck vampire heavy is super, super important. But it's when we get to our last card that the Thrill Seeker is going to make the most sense here. But first off, before we get there, let's talk about Edgar. Uh, we've got two copies of Edgar. Now, we don't have a lot of room in this deck for things that cost more than three. But Edgar is just too good, so we had to run two copies. It buffs all of our vampires again. So in addition to the four copies of Markov Baron, it gives us a nice six-card package of, uh, of a Lord. Of a, of a way to anthem all of our vampires, which is awesome. But also, if Edgar dies, it flips into the coffin and starts spitting out more vampires with lifelink, and then eventually comes back, which is super good if you combine it with Voldar and Thrillseeker. You can just put the counters on the Edgar, swing for damage, sack the Edgar, do six or sometimes more damage to whatever you want, and flip it into the coffin yourself. And that's a hell of a play. <laughs> we actually do that in one or two of the games, and it's it's pretty wild. Um, I think two is just the right number because we don't want a lot of four drops. Three would be too much, I think. We don't ever want to risk having like two of these in our hand at the same time, and we only got to three mana, and if we just had something that cost three or less to play, we could keep the pressure on the opponent and win the game, but instead we've got Edgar clogging up our hand and we can't play it. We don't ever want to get into that situation, but it is super good as an extra anthem effect, and we don't mind seeing a second one because if we play a second Edgar, we can sacrifice one of them to the legendary rule and it can immediately become the coffin, so we get to retain some value when normally playing legendary creatures you don't really get to retain any value, you have to sit on one of them uh, and just not cast it. So I think two is just the right number here. Um, to make sure that it's very, very rare that we ever have two at the same time. But when it does happen, it's probably late enough in the game that we don't mind having the second copy. Uh, let's let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the new card from Wilds of Eldraine that really brings this whole deck together. Really, there's two. Um, but the main one I want to talk about is Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Now, this card is seeing a lot of play all over the place. But in this deck, it's insane. Two mana comes down, it lets us tap and exile any card from a graveyard. If it's a creature, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on one of our creatures, and then all of our creatures that have plus one plus one counters on them will get all abilities of all creatures that have been exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So, the idea here is, not only can we put plus one plus one counters on all of our creatures to add even more aggression to the board and close out the game quicker, we can put counters on Dusk Legion Duelist to draw cards, that this is a continuous way to do that, which is super important. But those are both silver lining upsides. What we really want this for is there's just so many ways that this deck gets value off of activated abilities. Blood Tithe Harvester. Being able to exile Blood Tithe Harvester, turn every single one of our creatures that has counters into Blood Tithe Harvesters to get access to so much more removal. It basically makes it so that if you've got Nagath's Soul Cauldron, it's almost like you drew more removal because it's very, very easy to exile something you used as removal and turn more of your creatures into removal. Blood Tithe Harvester is the best bet for that, but also we can we can use the Voldar and Thrill Seeker in the same way. We can exile this from the graveyard to turn all of our creatures that have counters on them into Thrill Seekers. Now they can all just sack for one mana do damage to whatever they need, whether it's removal for the opponent's creatures or just killing the opponent outright, which we also do a couple times in the games. And it's it's pretty absurd, honestly, honestly, with the Soul Cauldron. But it doesn't stop there. We also have access to Cutthroat Contender. Pay one life to boost the power. Now, if we exile a Cutthroat Contender, all of our creatures with counters get the ability to buff their power by one by paying a life which in an aggro deck that's trying to win as quickly as possible is super powerful if you've got three different creatures still on the field with counters on them and now they all get the ability to buff their power it gets crazy but what's even crazier is we can actually do this in multiples if we exile a second or third cutthroat contender uh we can activate each of those abilities from the different copies of cutthroat contender that are under the soul cauldron we can activate each of them once. So if we've exiled two Cutthroat Contenders, all of our creatures 
with plus one plus one counters on them can actually pay two life to buff their power plus two if they want and that gets super powerful the other ability we can gain is with the pit fighter here giving all of our creatures the ability to pay two, discard a card and sack a vampire to draw two, sometimes digs us deep enough to get to our key cards we need to close out a game when we're running out of gas. Being able to sacrifice something like an Icor Drinker to this ability because we can just exile the Icor Drinker from our graveyard to get more value to make an Incubator token, token can be really sick, or even just sacrificing an Epicure because it's, you know, the least impactful creature on the board after it's landed on the board and done its thing. Uh, just some extra value there that we can absolutely get out of the cauldron, and it is a super crucial and integral integral part of the deck, and it absolutely puts in a ton of work. But there's there's some more synergies sort of built in as well with vampire socialite putting counters on creatures. Sometimes we can already have a board of creatures with counters already set up, ready to take advantage of abilities. All of a sudden, we just slam an Agatha's Soul Calder, and we've already got four creatures in play with counters from Socialite, and all four of those creatures can now, what, become a Blood Tithe Harvester that turn, and sack themselves to kill creatures that turn. Uh, it can become really kind of crazy, or they can just all become Thrill Seekers, like, immediately, and you can just kill the opponent outright. It can become just kind of absurd. We're also running one Restless by Vu, we're gonna call it the shop vac. It's the Hoover shop vac. I'm always just gonna call it the Hoover shop vac. Um, now the lands are important, so don't skip ahead to the gameplay before we talk about these lands because it's probably the most important part of this deck. Now, normally three color decks don't work as aggro decks because you don't want to play tapped lands. And in order to play three colors, you typically have to play lands that enter the battlefield tapped, and turn one has to be dedicated to playing one of those lands tapped, typically to get it out of the way, so you can play your more inf impactful spells on turn two and turn three without having tapped lands entering the battlefield. Uh, but an aggro deck really wants to hit their one drop on one as much as possible, so you don't want to be playing with tapped lands, which usually means that three color aggro decks do not work. But... In this deck, we've got four Secluded Courtyards and four Valdaran Estates, and all eight of those cards can give us whatever mana we need for a Vampire specifically. And because the Soul Cauldron is the only non-Vampire card in the deck, and it's colorless and doesn't need specific colors, these essentially act as Mardu Triomes, except they come into play untapped. With the Valdar Valdaran, uh, Valdaran Estate, having the extra ability to create blood tokens for us, and a lot of times we fill up the board so fast with vampires, we can just tap the Valdaran Estate to make a blood token without even spending any mana, and that gets crazy. We can put those blood tokens to good use, discarding lands to draw more cards, discarding Baron, whatever the case may be, but having access to those eight lands that make three different colors of mana while still coming into the battlefield untapped is what really makes this deck sing, and it's what really makes this deck possible. Restless by Hoover Shop Vac is the only land in the deck that has to come into the battlefield tapped. And I was tempted to not include this because of that, because I think the consistency of making sure we hit our one drop on one and we curve out correctly is important. But the ability is so good that I think one copy uh, is really warranted. We can pay three mana to turn this into a 2 2, and then when it swings, it gets to put a counter on anything. And because this deck gets so much value off counters, we can put counters on the Dusk Legion Duelist to draw cards, we can put counters on whatever we want to turn those creatures into whatever's been exiled with Soul Cauldron. Uh, I think it is worth the one copy of the, sh the Hoover Shop back here. Uh, but everything else in the deck comes into the battlefield untapped. We've only got three slow lands, one Shattered Sanctum, one Haunted Ridge, one Sundown Pass. Those are the only other lands that could come into play untapped, but because we've only got three, the chances that we have to play them before turn three are insanely low, uh, and I think, I think they're fine. I think it's worth having the three. We tested out a version of this that had six, and it was just... It wasn't, it wasn't really singing as loudly as we wanted it to, uh, but three seems to be a good number. We've also got one Battlefield Forge, one Caves of Koilos. We're running all four Black Cleave Cliffs, because one, once we get to the point where we have four mana, it's not incredibly crucial that we have access to, like, 
four mana on turn four. Sometimes it matters for Edgar, but it's way more important that we're consistently making all of our drops turn one through three. Uh, and then after that, we're usually running out of gas pretty quickly, so it's not a big deal if lands are coming into play tapped on turn four or later. So four Black Cleave Cliffs. We're going to run one Takanuma because it's good to get back a key creature if we need it. It's also decent to put things in the graveyard that we can maybe exile with the Soul Cauldron. And then one Swamp in case they use, you know, some of their land removal shenanigans. It lets us, you know, search for a basic put it back into play and not be completely decimated by a, a tempo play like that. So we're running a total of 20 lands. The deck is super low to the ground. It gets there super fast. Uh, and everything's super good. Honestly, I, I've, I tested versions of this deck where, you know, we tried to make room for a little bit of removal, you know, four copies of Go for the Throat at one point, and uh, it was just less consistent. The most important thing is being able to get all of the colored mana you need from these eight lands and once you start including non-vampires that require certain colors into the mix it really starts to muddy that up and make the deck less consistent and we're lucky that we have access to so much removal while staying in vampires with the three thrill, Se thrill seekers and the four blood tithe harvesters and then the three soul cauldrons that let us reuse those cards so i think it makes more sense to just go all in super deep on vampires just completely commit to throwing everything at the board i was a little bit worried about sweepers but what i found playing this is nobody's really playing sweepers that cost less than five mana these days with sunfall being so powerful and farewell being so powerful those being the staples um they usually can't sweep until turn five and this deck usually wins on turn four so i think it's better to just go all in commit to the board kill them before they play the sweeper uh you know in, instead of instead of worrying about that aspect and maybe trying to play some interaction in addition to our vampires the deck is just nuts it's got the fastest wins i've got in a deck in recent memory uh, and it's absolutely destroying the rank ladder right now granted i'm still working my way up through platinum because i've mostly been focused on brewing and not ranking up but everything i've come across all the standard typical meta decks i've just been destroying i've only lost like maybe one maybe two games uh and both times it was just a really really crazy kind of rare uncommon situations like uh rng situations just super super bad luck one game i think i was stuck on two mana another game i was um uh our opponent was on the play playing mono red and we got stuck on two mana it was kind of nuts um but uh most of those issues have been ironed out and honestly the deck just wins super quick super consistently i would not be surprised to see this just completely take the meta by storm and you know be popping up all over the place pretty quickly and i'm kind of surprised no one else has figured out this deck yet because it's insanely powerful like insanely powerful i recommend crafting it if you've got most of the cards already and giving it a whirl because it's nuts we get so many wins i'm gonna shut up and we're gonna check out the games all right we'll keep seven all right epic here We'll name Vampire. We will swing one. And we want to get as much value out of this socialite as possible, so let's get it on the board. Counter on the Epicure. If we make it through the swing next turn, we can put counters on everything we drop. Swing. Harvester, Pit Fighter, that's 11 damage right there, and then Thrill Seeker, if we get a land, we probably just win, we probably just win. Yeah, 
we'll do it like this. turn. Well, we've got him this turn. I don't think he's got a four-drop four, four drop sweeper in there. Good game. And that's without the Baron. Alright, we'll keep this. We'll lead with the cliffs to not give away the fact that we are a vampire deck just yet. Plays Giada. We'll swing. Works for me. Name Vampire. Play the Socialite. The reason we want to play the Socialite before the Duelist is because we want some value left behind if they kill whatever we play. If we play the Duelist and then they just kill it, we don't get any value left behind. But if they kill the Socialite now, we've got an extra counter on the on the Pit Fighter. Which is good for us. Alright. Two Vigilance creatures means they can block our Socialite. Which is kind of a bummer. Kind of a bummer. But it's okay. Because we can just do this. And then since they lost life that way, then we play the duelist. And it still gets a counter. We still draw a card. And then we play the Baron. which buffs everybody up, and then we swing with the Pit Fighter. And we at least get to get through for four, because he's not going to want to trade. That is a strong board. If we top deck a land and get to play Edgar... Oh boy. Even if he blocks the two strongest guys, he would still take 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, he kills the duelist. Flying lifelink, no vigilance. This man is out of his mind. God bless him. Does he got the sweeper? Sunfall? Oh, he's got a tapped land. I think we got him. He's got to go Vigilance, right? Well, he probably wants the lifelink. I think that's a mistake. I think that is a mistake. We're going to do it like this, because if we draw into a Baron, we could tap our last land and the two guys we just played that have Summoning Sickness to play it and buff up the team even more. Yeah, that's uh, that's good game. Holy smoke. <laughs> Keep seven. Like, none of these cards get played. That's crazy to me. Alright, we're going to start, we're going to name Vampire, play the Pit Fighter, Let's 
Socialite. Same reason as last time. Put a counter on the Pit Fighter. Tom can be found. If we can draw a mana, a land, so to speak. Doesn't even need to be white because we have a court down, courtyard down. In the next two draws and play Edgar on turn four with three pit fighters and a socialite out that might be game the perfect draw would be a one or two drop this turn to use up all of our mana and then a land the next turn I mean, we could just do that and that. I think we'll just do it like this. Swing in for seven. Put him at eleven. It's not perfect, but it's fine. We can also just sack the Thrill Seeker just to kill the Thalia, which is nice. But this deck is the bane of Thalia's existence because it's only got three cards in the whole deck that it taxes. No blocks. We'll let you draw a card. We're going to kill you before that card probably matters. Alright, here's the plan. Smash for seven. Unless he chump blocks the pit fighter, which he doesn't. Play another 3 2 pit fighter. Play another 3 2 pit fighter. Play a Hoover Shop Vac. I think we just win next turn. With Edgar coming down, that's what? Four, eight, 14, 17 damage. <laughs> Brutal Cathar hits the Pit Fighter. He's going to be very unhappy about this Edgar. He is not going to be dead. He's going to be at one, and both of his creatures are going to be dead. And even if he wipes the board, we've got the Hoover Shop Vac ready to go. We don't technically have the, the white mana for it. Oh, now we do. Gotta do what he's gotta do. Oh, he's just gonna scoop. Alright, turn five win. Oh, look at that. A one lander. Mulligan. Alright, we got three here. But, we don't have a lot to do with it. <laughs> Ugh. Alright, play the Contender first since we're on the play. Get in for an extra point of damage. Come on, oh. Black Cleave Cliffs. Pump it up, hit for two, we're both at 18. Play an Icor Drinker. Just 
kind of weird, but okay. thing and the turn mechanized warfare we'll just take six. Oh, he's not attacking sick Works for me. Go ahead and trade and we'll gain some life and everything will be nice. I mean, I don't see how he wins with us still at 16 and having an Edgar online. Go ahead and draw a card. Fine. We'll start spitting out life linkers against Mono Red. <laughs> like, not worried. What's he gonna choose? I guess he has to choose what? And the festivities? He takes the monastery swift spear? Is this man out of his mind? I think he's lost his gourd. Ditch the land. Legion Duelist. Tap you. Tap you. Tap you. Swing two. Welcome to Earth. Swift Spear. Say we take off. Scoundrel. Aside from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. So at most he can hit us for what? Five? Nope, now four. Now six. That's fine. We're gaining four life back when we swing. Get rid of the land. Smash. Gain more life. Play a harvester. Yeah, we got him. The little hubby bastards. All right, two lander seems fine. We do have an Edgar, but everything else we can play. We'll keep it. Start with the cliffs because it doesn't damage us. And since we're on the play, we'll start with the thing that's gonna do the most damage. If we were on the draw, we would start with the thing that leaves us with the most value if they kill it, which would be Icor Drinker. All right, we're gonna swing. And we're gonna play the Socialite, get a counter on that Pit Fighter. Here we go. Here we go, Mr. President. Here we go. Generous Visitor. Well, that is gonna be too little too late, I think. We'll swing for five. There's no way he blocks this. We play i Drinker. We play Cutthroat Contender. Even without a third land. Which I really, really wanted. <laughs> we're still we're still kinda killing it. Another generous visitor. And 
and an ossification. I assume he hits the socialite. Makes each a 2 2. Well, that's a mistake, I think. If you made one a 3 3, you could effectively block at least one of these dudes. I think that was a mistake. My turn. Alright. We've got our land. I guess we'll just do... This. And now if he wants to kill the pit fighter, he has to double block it. Otherwise, he's just chumping or taking it. He's just going to take it all. Oh, we should have pumped the contender. My bad. I still think he's dead next turn, so it probably doesn't matter. Close. Very close. Uh, very, very close, actually. If we had, if this was an untapped land, we would win. We're just going to set ourselves up for a win next turn. Pass the turn. We sack the Thrill Seeker, and then we exile it with the Soul Cauldron, put it on another creature, sack that creature, win. Piece of cake. He needs to kill the Soul Cauldron, and he probably doesn't realize it. We're gonna chump block the Naturalist with the Thrill Seeker. So that when we sack it, he doesn't gain any life. That's if he even attacks with it. He might not even realize what we can do with the Thrill Seeker next turn. If he did, he would definitely attack with the Naturalist. And that would kind of... Uh, put it in our hands to have to make sure we play against the Naturalist correctly. He should see what we can do. And his only, his only chance of winning is if we make a play mistake, we don't block with the Thrill Seeker, and then sack in response so that he doesn't gain the 8 life. But he didn't do it. Now they're all thrill seekers. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hardly knew you. Oh, we got one of our slow lands, unfortunately. We only have four left in the deck. I think it's going to be better if we mulligan. Uh, we're still going to only keep two lands. Hey, thanks, Duchess. Alright, Pit Fighter is down. Next turn, we got Socialite coming in. Now, he can't use removal and a counterspell. Ooh. Ooh, he didn't have anything that turn. We should get a pretty easy win, Yuck. I don't think there would be four in here. I don't think we get to five mana. 
quick enough. Did our opponent just, like, quit? What's the correct way to do this? Alright, now we get counters because the epic here pinged them. We draw. Tap, tap, tap. And we swing. Alright, we've got lethal next turn unless he's got a sweeper. But like I've already said, Azorius isn't running four mana sweepers anymore. They're heavily committed to spot removal leading into a five drop sunfall. So... Should be able to deal with this. At best, he's got Wandering Emperor, I think. Okay, Smoldering Egg. He's actually in Jeskai. This man is actually in Jeskai. Oh, I mean, we're just gonna swing. Blocks there. Goes to one. We get a counter on the duelist. Draw a card. We get a soul cauldron. And our opponent sweeps. Not sweeps. Scoops. Yeah, that one. This looks good. It's definitely slow. We've only got the one red mana, and it's a tap land. Oh god, and of course everything's red. It means we gotta play the duelist. Just gotta play the thing that uses the most mana. Oof. We don't have very many cards in the deck that can't make red mana. We got two of them. Actually, how many do we have? Uh, in the whole deck, there's only four lands that don't make red mana. In the whole deck. And we got half of them. Which is kind of hilarious. No blocks. I mean, that seems pretty good. They'd have to two for one in order to kill it. We've got Baron. So next turn we can cast the Pit Fighter. Tap the Pit Fighter and the other two lands to play the Baron and then swing with all of our boys. That seems fine. We're just gonna take the damage. Because we're about to buff this duelist into a 5 5. Only we could play more one drops. We just don't have enough red mana to do it. All right, I have a plan. Now we swing, and he can't kill it. We can even sack the Thrill Seeker at instant speed to do two damage to something. Oof. That's, uh, that's kind of rough. 
can we get away with doing that? I guess we gotta do it like this. Goodbye. And we've still got a 5-5 blocker up. We're at 9, but I think we're okay. Even though we can't play any of our red stuff. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. It is what it is. Alright, we gotta kill the Knight Errant. Right? So if we Agatha's Soul Cauldron, exile the Thrill Seeker, put a counter on a Pit Fighter, sack the Pit Fighter? Yeah, that's what we do. Alright, I got this. Exile the Thrill Seeker. Put the counter on the Pit Fighter. Sack to kill the Knight Errant. And then swing with everything. You're at 10, we gain 2. We've got a 5 5 blocker. Do you have a Brutal Cathar? Plays Adeline. Well. Well, well, well. Look at what we have here. Epicure. Socialite. Puts a counter on everything. We draw a card. <clears throat> Let me think. Let me think for a moment. Oh, he's just gonna scoop. I think it's so good. We'll keep this. Two lands is a little bit worrisome, but we have at least one one drop, and we have the Baron, which we can convoke out. So I think it's okay. All right, we're gonna start with the cliffs so we don't give away that we're playing vampires. <clears throat> Play the pit fighter. Play you. Let's see, we could go you, you. Don't wanna do that. I think it's better to do you and then you turn two and we have seven power on the field we did have to skip swinging what's up narb good to see you how you doing deck is wild. Absolutely wild. Obira. Well, that does mean we can't attack with the Baron, right? Attack with both of these. See if he wants to trade. We're going to set ourselves up so that next turn we can attack with Baron, though. 
by playing the socialite out. Now it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's a pretty strong board. Hanging in there, Narb. Uh, this deck is kind of crazy. It is absolutely my, my number one deck to rank up through Platinum Diamond, I think. Alright. Kills the Baron. That's fine. Still in a very strong position here. We will swing. Fairy Mastermind, are you actually going to block things? Okay. He's really going for it. Um, I mean, I guess we just have two 3-3 three, three Menace creatures. That, that seems good. We're probably going to blood token away the Harvester here and try to get a fourth land for Edgar. Because that would be very strong. No dice. Alright, we'll swing. He can't block. He goes to three. So Epicure will get a counter now. Two counters, rather. Uh, Soul Cauldron. We could have gotten him to one if we played the Soul Cauldron first. But I'd rather wait. I only lost one game so far. And it was because I got stuck on two lands. Against Mono Red. With them on the play. Uh... I haven't played a game yet that's gone past turn 5. This one's a little slower than we're used to, but it's okay. We're going to keep it. We're going to see if we can make a slow hand work. We'll start with the Hoover Shop Vac. Hey, there we go. Vampire. Harvester. We can't play two black one drops. So Harvester's correct here. It's gonna be good. Alright, we will swing. Now, in case they're holding up removal to use on our socialite... Oh, are they going to use it on the harvester? Well, they already skipped... Blocks. Uh... Now, normally, to avoid them using removal on our socialite before we get the counter on our one drop as well, what we want to do is play the one drop first. And we want it to be the lifelinker. And then we play the Socialite to make sure the counters go on both, even if they have removal. He tapped out there for the, the Arden Vale Fealty, so it didn't really matter. But I think it's still a good habit to get in. To recognize when those play lines are available and making the right choice there. No blocks. Let's see. We could swing with the Hoover Shot Fact and put a counter on the Socialite. Make it really hard for him to block the way he wants to. But I don't think that's worth it. We're going to do it like this. It might be a little wasteful, because that's a four-power creature.
but I think it's going to be worth it. We'll play the Duelist first. So we can draw a card. And then to make sure we use as much of our mana as possible, we'll play another Harvester. Get that Blood Token. Now we're in pretty good shape. A Lord would be wonderful. No dice. Draw a card off the Dusk Legion Duelist. He's going to play a Wandering Emperor and probably eat our Socialite. He could double block the Socialite and eat something else. Like maybe the i Drinker to make sure that we can't incubate it. I hope you're ready to lose. Wow, the Blood Tithe Harvester? This man out of his mind. You are not much of a roadblock. And he doesn't block? This man is off his rocker. Wow. Okay. He's getting really greedy. He wants them to still be around for the Broker's Ascendancy. <sighs> this man's out of his mind. Absolutely out of his mind. Out of his mind. And a three, and a three. Let's go. He has to let the social light through. Oh, he can kill the socialite. It's pretty good. Although he did lose life. That is a wrong block, sir. That is a wrong block. Uh guess we play, since we can't get a counter on it, I guess we play the Harvester. Sunfall? Sunfall's gonna be rough. If he's got it. He was able to stabilize. Guards, to me. Oh, he didn't get the fifth land drop. We got him to four. It's very close. Socialite is sick. Socialite is very good. I think we got him. He might be thinking of holding up mana for another Wandering Emperor. Another Markov Baron. Hmm. We could buy you back.
That is something we could do. Tricky. Do it like that. And we'll swing. An adult. What does he have in his hand? Knights are more relevant than samurais, I think. Faithful mending to gain two. So he goes to one. Man's out of his mind. Although he could get the sunfall now. We want to prepare for that. We prepare for that by exiling the Icor Drinker because it gives us a thing that can be an attacking creature next turn that isn't a creature now, so we don't lose it to sunfall. And we keep our cards in our hand to recover from potential sweepers. Hoover Shopvac. Hoover Shopvac. No blocks. We can take the damage. Land Sunfall, depopulate. I mean, I've still got you. Keep watch for intruders. I've still got you. If I top deck a land. Which means we want to make sure we top deck a land. There we go. Ooh, back. Token. And that's game. Whew, sweaty game. Sweaty, sweaty, sweaty game. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there. And if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately, that's somewhere up that way. Also, subscribe, circle below, do all the things.